So today we're going live and we're talking about censorship. I was recently deleted on TikTok at 300,000 people. So my question is to you, what platforms are you using for social media? Telegram, Rumble, YouTube, what are you using today? Maybe it's Instagram. Comment below and let me know. What's going on, everybody? What's going on? Whoa, 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 you were kicked and banned from TikTok. Yes, I guess the truth was resonating on TikTok so much that they decided to delete me. <laughs> and it was funny because I went outside and showed all this beautiful orchestrated weather that we have going on right now and all the uh, barrage in the skies. And I guess that that went against the community guidelines, which is funny. The community guidelines were threatened by talking about the weather and how it seems winter and everything in which we face is all created. That's the, definitely what I've started to learn. I start to feel that a lot of our seasons and kind of everything that we think about, I don't think it really works in the way that it does because it only starts when this barrage happens in the sky. All of a sudden it starts to become winter. So I guess as somebody just said, the truth gets banned. I watch your videos usually on YouTube. Even if they take them off, I go to Rumble. I like to hear that. And that's the thing. I've been trying to put the information everywhere because now YouTube has been acting up. And then the other day, Rumble was down, you know, and then Instagram. Instagram is hilarious, actually, because a lot of people will try to comment on the post and then Instagram will actually try to not allow people to comment. So people will write comments and then it'll get marked as spam. And then people's comments get removed. So all of these social media platforms that we're trying to use to be social seem quite antisocial, especially if you can't communicate amongst anybody. So it's just, it's crazy. I used to use Insta Instagram and YouTube, bitch, you too need to go more to Rumble. 100%. You know, go to different platforms and check out different platforms. I do a lot with Telegram now because, you know, Telegram is, I can just speak. I don't have to worry about being censored, you know, and even like, even this, you know, with Instagram, they reduce the ability for people to see that this is actually live. You know, I've, I've seen that too, where I don't even see people, I follow, let's say friends and family, and I don't even see them. I don't even see them and I'm following them so I can see their posts, but I don't get to see them. You know, so it's, it's silly with all of this censorship and everything else. And, you know, the real reason that they're censoring a lot of this information and our page and all of these things is because the truth keeps coming out. You know, the truth is coming out so fast. There's so many people reporting the truth now. It's just going crazy. And everybody was asking where you can find it. Telegram, Cultivate Elevate. That's the channel. And it's Elevate Thy Mind. And you can come in there, always putting up a ton of stuff in there. But the truth is coming out so much that's the thing. It just keeps coming out more and more. And they're worried that the truth is coming out too quickly. So they're trying to censor it and block it and then trying to, you know, keep dim the frequency. And as somebody just said, with everything they're trying to do with the weather, where they're trying to make it winter and cloudy everywhere, is because what's happening is the earth frequency is increasing so heavily with the truth because it's awakening minds and souls at the same time so they go in there and try to block it all out with all the chemical nonsense that they put up in the air to try to dim the sun so that they can try to lower the frequency and the reason i say that is because right now here in scottsdale in january it feels like the summertime all the animals are out all the birds are out the lizards are out it feels like that warmth that you have from summertime and what i'm convinced is they're trying to block as much as they can with social media and our skies and all of that to try to lower down that frequency because the vibration is going up so high. Because so many people are seeing through the nonsense and it's happening every day. Every single day, more and more people are seeing through the nonsense and it's just gonna keep continuing. So they do a lot of censorship and they try to block the information from getting out but the magic is, is that it can actually get out in different ways. And somebody just said, I commented on biodynamic apples are good for you and it was marked as spam. I mean, think about that. You commented that 
organic was good for you and it was marked as spam. I mean, how can we, how can we be social <laughs> on a social media platform if we're not allowed to be social or only certain ways of being social are allowed? Well, you, you commented too many times. They used to tell me that back in uh, 2021, I remember I would comment on people's pages because I would see something pop up in my feed and I would go and comment and it would say your comment has been restricted because you've commented too much. I've been too social on a social media platform, so my comment has been restricted. Think about that. That is social media in 2024. Sorry, Matt, you've commented and talked to your friends and family too many times. You need to stop doing that as much. You need to be less social. You can only comment six messages per day. Please insert $3 so that you can continue to comment. That's, that's what we got going on, it seems. Because as people are trying to comment here, they're saying the exact same thing. You can't comment with each other. You're not allowed to. You know, and then you send people a message. And I saw on my one buddy's page, I saw on my, uh, he was sending people messages. And they started restricting his messages. He couldn't message to his friends. Which then you're sitting there thinking, like, what's the point of having a DM? Can't even DM people. You know, can't even send them a direct message. Sorry, your content has been restricted for communicating too much and being too friendly. You're being too social on a social media platform. You know, you sit there and go, well, then, okay. And then it was funny, too, because when I put up the World Without Cancer book, and that post just went crazy yesterday, and I'm happy that everybody's sharing all of that. But what was interesting was, was I couldn't even log, log back in to Instagram. Instagram considered me logging into my own account suspicious. My own account through my own device is now considered suspicious because of the content in which I posted. So I had to reinstall Instagram and put it all back in there and then reconnect and then send myself text messages to make sure that it was me using my platform to talk to all of our followers and not everybody who's here right now. Think about that. Think about how goofy that is that you have to do that. Then number two is the fact of when I signed back on, it said that it wanted to track and take all my information, which I denied all of those things on there as well. But what was interesting is it said, we're doing all of this and tracking your information to keep Instagram free. Well, what's interesting about that is Instagram's always been free. I mean, Facebook and Instagram has been free forever. But now, because they're tracking your information, they're saying that that's what keeps it free. But who is determining what is free? I can't send messages. I can't write comments. I can't talk to my friends and family. It doesn't seem too free, if you think about it. And as somebody just said, a lot of people can't even help on Facebook groups. There's a lot of natural related products where people are trying to help and talk to each other and they can't help each other. I mean, so then you start to sit there and go, Whoa, huh? What? And somebody says the live is glitching. I can see that too. You know, and that's the thing. Anytime the information is being exchanged, all of a sudden things can't play. Last week when we were doing a live, I shared it. And I did a whole bunch of different things related to the aliens and the alien tax and all that funny, funny thing that they're trying to say. Aliens are coming with alien taxes and you guys better watch out because disease X is coming and that whole situation, which is going to be followed by aliens and alien taxes. But I talked about that one. We shared that one up and people couldn't click to open it. So these are all the things. And the only reason I'm talking about this is because these are all the things in which are faced with just trying to speak about being healthy. Just trying to help people be healthy. Because when I had my health ailments and I had all my issues that I had, you know, years ago, the, the only thing the professionals would tell me was it was genetic and you're getting older. Oh, you're just getting older, Matt. That's what it is. Oh, it runs in your genes. It's always those same two things they would say. But it wasn't. I was poisoning myself. I was eating GMOs. I was eating toxins. 
I wasn't filtering my water. I wasn't caring about what was going into my body. I wasn't wearing, worried about the clothes that I wear if they are natural materials. I wasn't worried about EMF and all the dangers that come with all the pinging and frequencies that work on a microwave spectrum, according to the US Navy of 1971. I wasn't worried about all those things. But all of those things, talking about solutions to those things, become a threat to social media. And then, like I was saying, as these things get blocked, and then people can't find resources. That's what's crazy. You go onto Google and you're like, what type of food should I eat? And Google says, Monsanto is good for you. Monsanto is what you want. Foods with pesticides are good for you. Well, if I eat pesticides, won't I get poisoned? Google and Monsanto are now sponsored by this message. So then you go there and you try to find the information and you're trying to be healthy, but then Google is regurgitating almost like Brando. It's what plants crave. Remember that whole thing with electrolytes and that whole thing in the movie Idiocracy? It's the same exact thing. And then people can't find things because the information is being censored by the fact checkers. And what's funny is the fact checkers, you could show a .gov website and the fact checkers would say that the facts are not correct. You could show a book, you could show a scientist, you could show a researcher, you could show, show a professional. All of those would be deemed as not true. And that's the problem where people are trying to find information. They can't find the information because people who are attempting to put out the information are being blocked and censored. And this is where it just gets crazy because you're funneling all this information like a gatekeeper so that people can't find that information. And if people are healthy, they're not making any money. They're not making money off of all the healthy people. They're, they can't make big profits. All of these companies, you know, Monsanto and all these other companies which are trying to poison the people so that they can make money off the people. And I'm just thankful that no matter what, even through all this nonsense, people still share our videos, still get the message out, still come to Telegram, still find it, and keep sharing. Because I think that's the most important thing that people need to do. You have to keep sharing the messages and you have to keep getting the information out. Because when we stop all that, we are unaware of everything that's going on. Same with what's happening, everything with the revolutions, which are happening right now in Germany and France and all the farmers and all the people who are over it. You know, that's a big part that's not being shown on Operation Mockingbird. You know, so with sharing, people can find out what's actually going on. Because Operation Mockingbird, or the media, will just keep telling you the same narrative. You know, they're probably still talking about how the climate is changing. And it's all your fault. It's because you've been driving those gasoline cars, even though we've had the technology for water cars for the last 100 years. And we had electric cars 100 years ago. But, you know, it's your gasoline car today. It's also your gas stove. It's actually probably because you've been cooking with fire. You know, cooking with fire could go against the climate. Better use some sort of electric. Or here's another one, solar panels. They always preach solar panels. They keep telling us we need solar panels. Solar panels are gonna save us. Well, if the White House admitted to blocking out the sun, how are we gonna use solar panels? If you got a cloudy day every day, it doesn't seem too sustainable. You're not gonna get any energy. Then you go into the windmills. Windmills are all frozen and they don't run after a certain temperature. If it's too cold, they don't, they don't function. There's all those windmill graves we've seen with just tons of windmills all over the place being thrown away because those just fall apart. They cost about five million and they just toss them. So that doesn't make a lot of sense. And then you move to electric vehicles, which they're telling everybody you need electric vehicles. What did we see happen last week in Chicago? It was, what, negative 10 or 15? All the Teslas froze. All the charging stations froze. All the people couldn't get into their cars or use their cars. So you can only use green energy when it's not too hot and when it's not too cold. Sustainable, they say. Not too hot, not too cold. That's gotta be the perfect temperature. That's how green energy works. 
so you sit there and you see all these 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 holes in the story and you know people have to be aware of that when i was in northern california the air was so toxic that it was making me sick well it's interesting that you say that because over by joshua tree they have a ton of those windmills and you can see the air it just doesn't look healthy and the birds aren't happy everything is not really seeming correct the energy is very strange you know the other thing too is because you look at that spinning and that spiraling that's happening and all the power that's going to these turbines because they're not spinning themselves the power that's going to those turbines you start to sit there and go that's a lot of energy wasted they say that these the wind is making a move but what's funny is i had a buddy who was working on wind turbines and he was showing me that the wind turbines weren't even hooked up they didn't even have power lines running to them they were just out in the, out in the middle of the field so then you sit there and go hmm okay got it wind turbines are going to save us windmills and all the whole things are going to save us and that whole thing but then you're going to spend all this money in order to save us shouldn't we be using things that work with nature not against it shouldn't we not be destroying nature in order to be green and sustainable surely doesn't make any sense Somebody's talking about batteries, wind turbines are so expensive to run, 100%, all this stuff, you know? That's the thing, when you go back in time, you see that there was an abundance of energy. You know, you go back to the 1800s, 1850s, 1860s, 1870s, abundance of energy. They used things called dynamos. That's what they were using, dynamos. One that everybody should look into, these big, gigantic, beautiful energy producers called dynamos. But somehow those all went away. And then we started doing everything a little bit different. And then we started reducing everything now and saying that it's less and less sustainable. You know, when they were getting rid of all the lead too, that was another one, they were getting rid of lead batteries. A lot of those electric vehicles that they used to use back in the 1800s, which seemed to be pretty efficient. If you look at the videos, it's pretty crazy, but they had lead batteries in there, you know? So it's like, why did we get rid of that? A lot of the things that seemed efficient back in the 1800s, 1900s, they kind of got rid of that. And I was actually doing some research, and I think this is one that everybody should look into. It's the uh, Hindenburg, the Hindenburg blimp. And it, they have a different name too. There's, it's, with a, it's a different, there's another name for it, but I'll call it a blimp or a Zeppelin. You can look into Zeppelins or blimps. This is a really good one to look into. Go look at the videos of people flying around on Zeppelins and blimps in the 1800s and 1900s. And what was interesting was the whole Hindenburg situation was one scenario in which the blimp basically popped and then it fell and the people passed away. They said there, there were about, I think it was like 25 people who passed away with the Hindenburg situation. But what they didn't say is that the other blimps that were all flying around at that same exact time have flown over 1 million miles around the earth. They were taking blimps from Europe to South America, from South America to Australia, from Australia to Asia, from Asia to the United States. They didn't have to use any of the stuff that we have today. They had, this is where it gets crazy too. They had bars in the blimps. So you could sit there, have a drink. You could have food. You could have, you could go to the library. If you wanted to read a book, you could read a book on the blimp. I mean, think about all this. When you go to the airport on average, they don't even let you take a little two ounce glass of water with you. They're like, oh, that's too much water. You're dangerous with that. But if you were on these blimps, you could be flying all around the world for next to nothing. Now, what's interesting is the Hindenburg situation happened just about the same time when all the airlines were booming. So it's almost like they had to get rid of the competition. So the Hindenburg incident occurred and then all of a sudden germany had a shortage of helium as well and then moved into war and then all of a sudden that technology was lost a beautiful technology which when i look at the old maps of the world 1400s 1500s and that whole situation you start to go it seems like people are flying around on blimps or zeppelins and they were up in the air that's kind of what it seems you know the first airplane, the Wright Brother airplane, or whatever that is, people were up in the air a long time ago. 
There were blimps all over, zeppelins all over the place. People were exploring. People understood the dynamics of the air. You know, there was even one part in this book I was reading about the blimps that they were saying that they would navigate through electrical storms. Like they understood everything about how to travel. So when they're like, oh, the first airplane, 1910, and you know, first time person's going up into the air, people were already flying around all the time. Somebody said the airships had a great safety record. Before the Hindenburg event, the flights were smooth and fast compared to ships. And they also transported materials, such as postage, such as, you know, different things that things were, they were shipping. You know, they were doing so much. But once again, you know, we got to get rid of that technology because we have this technology over here. And then we can cram people into these little tiny seats and be like, do you want to pay extra for that? Do you need that bag of peanuts? That'll be $42. $42 for that bag of peanuts. And then we'll cram you into a smaller seat. And then we'll soon have you just standing up on the airplane. And it'll be like twelve. it will be $12,000 for you to fly. <laughs> That's flying in 2024. We'll pack you in like a sardine. They had to shout it down like the Titanic situation. 100%. 100%. Titanic was also another one, which was deemed as competition to everything else. The Titanic, and I believe it was the Olympi Olympian, or Olympic, there was another really big ship. But those were steamships. They ran on steam en engines. And they were a threat to the Rockefeller takeover. You got petroleum. You need petroleum. You can't have steam engines. You can't be running on water. That's not very sustainable. You need petroleum. And then you get into all this whole thing with that and taking over. Somebody said it was the Olympic lady. Yes, that's the name of it. Sister ship of Olympic lady. So Rockefellers came in, got to get rid of that. They had the Titanic event, which also just so happened to happen around the Federal Reserve enactment. You know, that whole private uh, mafia corporation, that whole situation happened. And you had that event, but they got rid of the Titanic, the Olympic, and all these massive ships. Very, very big ships. Which, when you look back, you start to wonder, who was building those ships? Maybe those ships, you know, were holding people, as people just said, who opposed the Federal Reserve. It just so happened that the ships held the people who opposed the Federal Reserve. And then within a couple days, the Federal Reserve all of a sudden appeared after the ship sank. Hmm. One would think by chance that it was an intentional. Same thing like the blimps, same thing like these ships. And you see these things get moved out and then people forget because they get used to a new form of technology. You've got to use Rockefeller Petroleum for this. And you've got to use Rockefeller Petroleum for these chemicals. And you've got to take Rockefeller Petroleum and turn it into plastic and materials and all these different things. And that forever changed the course of everything. Yes, there's a great book, The uh, Jekyll and Hyde by G. Edward Griffin, where he talks all about Jekyll Island. And no, it's not Jekyll and Hyde. Jekyll and Hyde is, um, this is two personalities. Creature from Jekyll Island by G. Edward Griffin is the book on the Federal Reserve. And that's a great one people should look into. Very in-depth, you know, so people are aware of what the Federal Reserve is. I mean, think of what the Federal Reserve is doing right now to the economy. They just jack up the interest rates and they just make things into whatever they want. They control the economy and they do this every four, eight years, whatever it is. They control everything. They dictate what the economy is going to do. And then they, if they want to slow it down, if they want to stop it, if they want to halt it, if they want to crash it, the Federal Reserve. That also ties into BlackRock and Vanguard and State Street. You get into those three. They control all of that. But yes, as somebody said, the Fed is a private business. 100%. It's not public. It's not for the people. It's just there to manipulate and control things. And that's what they've been doing since 1913. Manipulating and controlling. And then they orchestrate wars. And then they play games. They increase taxes. Oh, you got to pay more because it's a war. Then we lower taxes. Oh, then we'll do this. Then we'll give you a higher interest rate. And then we'll lower that interest rate. It's all games. 
And as somebody just said, they don't have to disclose who sits on the board. So think about that. You don't even know who's in control. They don't have to disclose it. So, you know, that's the other thing is you're playing games with the economy. And you can just keep playing games with the economy and be like, oh, now we'll stop it. We'll give everybody an 8% mortgage rate right now so that we can slow down the economy. Then next year, we'll just kind of drop it down and say the economy is recovering. Well, no, you actually dictated what the economy was going to do because you control that and you're manipulating currency and you're manipulating the way things work. Somebody just said, I'm glad it's all coming out. People are waking up to the shenanigans. Yes, they are. You know, they're only going to continue. It will only continue the amount of people waking up from this nonsense. Because, you know, when you get into all of this, you go back into taxes, you go back into the 16th Amendment. You know, most people don't know about that one. But when the 16th Amendment came about, that's when the state started taxing the people. And that was also supposed to be temporary. You know, you get into income tax, that was supposed to be temporary. That was supposed to start out at 2%. 2%. 2%. Two percent, you know, maybe two percent to 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 you know the roads, two percent to maybe the education, the fire, the police, you know, something like that. Maybe two percent. Now we'll say thirty-seven percent. During just about, I believe it was before World War II, it was something like seventy or eighty percent. I mean, it's crazy when you get into the taxes, and the taxation is theft because they're just taking the money, and then where does it go? You know, and the biggest swing in the economy is that it's all political theater back and forth. That's exactly, we go from one to the other, from one to the other. We just keep going back and forth because that keeps the narrative going. Notice how there's not additional options. How about like nobody? How about that? How about like, I'm just nobody, just that's it. Like nobody. How about that? Now that one, that option never comes up. You either go to this side or you go to this side. And then you pick between. One maybe has more regulation. One has less re regulation. But they still kind of still start to do the same thing. They just throw little things in between that you didn't see. It's just crazy. And if there were actual choices for people to select somebody, not elect, select somebody, then that would make more sense. But this is where it gets all crazy. When you start going back all this, you start looking at, wait a minute, so this is a poll. It's an opinion poll. That's based on the opinion or the poll of the people. So then you sit there and go, wait, what? It's a poll. That's not somebody being selected. And then who selects somebody? Then you go based on the elect electoral college and that whole situation. And then you start to go, electorals? Who, who are those people? Who are the people within the electoral votes? Because it's not them people, it's these people. And you start to see all these things that don't make a lot of sense. And then you look at how many people, this is a great one too, how many people voted? They're like, oh, well, we had 81 million people vote in 2020. Well, there's 330 million people in the country. Where's all the rest of the votes? Now you can say kids, right? We could just say that that doesn't count. But then you guys start to wonder, well, where's the rest of the people? It was kind of like when I saw the Chicago, they had a election in Chicago and Chicago's got a lot of people. There's like millions of people in Chicago. And it was funny because the votes were like, like, like 12,000. And I thought, okay, there's a million people or more in Chicago, but there's only 12,000 people voting. <laughs> Where'd they go? <laughs> you know, where's all the missing people? So, you know, you, the whole point of this is just asking questions, you know, look at numbers and just sit there and go and look at numbers and yeah, and start to wonder, hmm, doesn't make a lot of sense. Should probably ask a question and kind of analyze those stats on this topic. As somebody just said, they are selected. Yes, it's all, it, and, that, and that's the thing, you know, we have to realize that. And the thing is, is I think people need to take back their power and start to do more for themselves, you know? Because if you give your power, like let's say you wanna pick this person, 
and we say that person's going to come in and that person's going to help me and that person's going to help us and whatever else if we give that away then we're consenting to allowing them to control us it's kind of how tyranny works you pick that person and you're like well that person's going to run me no we should run ourselves and i think that's really important you know we need to know that we need to run ourselves and what we can do as a community what we can do to take care of each other, what we can do to take care of our friends and family, how we can help them be healthy, how we can help them grow food, how we can help them, you know, figure out things about their future, you know, maybe things related to even, you know, finance and helping them with something, that relation, whatever it may be, you know, if they're, if they're not feeling well to help uplift them, there's all things that we could be doing. All the rest of the stuff that goes on is all just distractions. I've realized it's all just distractions. It's to keep the eyes busy. Because if the eyes are busy, then what happens is we don't pay attention to all the other things that are going on. That's what happens, you know? And it's just, it's just my thoughts on it. Because there's been so many things, they know how to get, they know how to get people to pay attention and they know how to keep people focused. And everything happens exactly how they want to keep the eyes on them. I mean, think about, like, for example, when I talked about the alien situation. The alien, 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 alien. It's to keep you over here. Now, if it's not the alien thing, now we got to focus you over here. And then we got to focus you on this, and then we focus you on that. In reality, what we need to be focusing on, educating ourselves, reading more books, spending time with nature, growing our own food, getting our own water, creating our own energy sources, all of those things separate you from the kingdom. And we're not taught about those things. Because if we have our own independence on those things, we're not dependent on this nonsense anymore. <laughs> Someone said aliens are fake news. It's irrelevant. Yeah, I know, we covered that. We've covered the <laughs> we covered a bunch of those with the with the fake news and the aliens and you know world of the wars and that whole situation. And somebody just said the Chinese spy balloon. Perfect example. A balloon was floating across the country and was deemed as a threat to the people. Think about that, a balloon. Like you go to the store and you get a balloon and you're like, hi, oh, can I get two of those? And then it floats away and they're like, okay, that could be it. That might initiate it. That might be the biggest thing. That might make World War III. The balloons, the satellites, as, as Sam just said. Yes, the satellites that are attached to balloons. Elon Musk could be sending up more satellites attached to balloons and those could be going up there. Those could be the threat for World War III. <laughs> it's too funny. Honestly, it just, you sit there, it's just, I think the more, the more you kind of just, you know, I don't, I don't even know how to say it, but the more you, the more you learn, I guess the word, I think it's discernment, but you start to just see things and go, really? That's what you came up with? <laughs> That's as good as you could get? A, a, a Chinese spy balloon? You know, really, a balloon floating across and people are filming it. They're like, look at, look at that balloon. Honestly, they put fluoride in our water system and are putting cell phone towers all over the place. We have bigger concerns than the balloon <laughs> that's floating across the country. You know, I mean, that's, that's how I see it. Like, I got to be worried about how to grow some food and be able to have enough food so that we survive during this nonsense that they put us, a.k.a. winter all the time. You know, we got a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> it's got them. And, you, and they want us to give energy to it that's the other thing the important part is about not giving energy to these things because it's a bunch of nonsense it's to keep you captivated you know keep you hooked in like just keep you focused like the balloon did you guys see what happened with the balloon today and I, you know I get it if, if somebody was scared and whatever else I totally understand it's where we are at that point of our life but you know it's just you gotta think it's nonsense you know just a bunch of nonsense. Somebody said, how much fulvic acid is in shilajah? So there's 75% fulvic acid in the shilajah. We have them extracted, they're cold pressed, and they provide the body with 84 of 102 minerals. So if you're missing minerals in your body, shilajah can work very well at bringing back the minerals. And as we've talked about with Monsanto and all the pesticides that they spray all over the place, they're decimating the mineral content of our soil. So shilajot can work really well at bringing the minerals back into the body and also detoxing, cleansing out things out of the body, especially things like graphene. You know that whole thing that they're trying to do? Putting a lot of graphene in people? 
Shilajot is a counter towards that. You can also use things like chlorella, chlorophyll, and wheatgrass to pull out that graphene as well too. But Shilajot is a great one, great at restoring the body, bringing back energy, cleansing the body, turning on the brain. It's, it goes back, there's, a, there's over 5,000 studies on the benefit of Shilajot, but it's just absolutely remarkable. And it's a great one to just keep the body at balance, you know, because the thing is, is we're missing a lot of minerals in our body. I mean, that's why a lot of people are suffering from nutritional deficiencies or they have too many toxins in their body. They get maybe too many of these, you know, there's too much EMF or Wi-Fi in their home or their water is filtered, filled with toxins and that's kind of messing with their health. So when you get into it, you want to correct all those things and Shilajot can work really well with that. And as somebody just said, yes, you can take it with a healthy fat so that you can get those fat soluble minerals as well. Because that's the other thing too. You know, there are fat soluble minerals that are needed for the body, that are also needed for the brain. And if you think about it, your cells have a lot of fat in them. They also have a lot of water. So Shilajot can work really well with that. Some people say Shilajot have a lot of heavy metals in them and sometimes farmed with crazy things. Do you think that's true? I think that would depend on where it's sourced. So for example, we talk to our farmer every like every two days. He's in Russia, he's in Siberia, the Altai region, or Altai region, sorry. And I've seen the videos, I know how it's, you know, how it's pulled, I know how they get it out of the mountain, everything. You know, so it all depends on where your Shilajot is coming from. And the other thing too with Shilajot is you have to be aware that sometimes like when it's in a tar, tar-like bottle or like a tar-like substance, it's been heavily processed. And this is through my research of looking at a lot of the ones that are in a little bottle that's like tar. That tar has been heavily processed. That's why sometimes somebody will take like a spoon and it won't even be able to dent it. And that's because of all that processing that takes place. So you want to stick to things that are in a simple form and have not been heavily processed. With our Shilajan, we keep it cold pressed and we keep it in its most purest form and it's been cleaned with distilled water. So it's nice and simple, nothing too crazy, but just very, very pure. And that's to keep everything intact. You have to think about processing. And this is really important for all supplements, all vitamins, everything. The processing is one of the most important parts. If people are over processing or pasteurizing, their supplements or vitamins or food, then what happens is the body begins to not get those minerals because they're extending the shelf life. And they do this a lot with milk, actually. Pasteurized milk, pasteurized almond milk, pasteurized juices. You know, they're zapping it. They're microwaving the, the, the food so that they can extend the shelf life. So then you're not getting the minerals that you're trying to get. This is why unpasteurized foods are the best for you. Unpasteurized milk, unpasteurized honey, and any other types of foods that are organic and unpasteurized are remarkable for the body because they haven't gone through a microwave process to extend the shelf life. Somebody said you don't want to strip all the goodies out of it, then what's the point? Exactly. I mean, you sit there and go, okay, so I bought this juice and it says pasteurized juice and it's now had all the vitamin C removed from it. And then all of a sudden you look at the juice and it says refortified with vitamin C. Think about that. You pasteurized it, extend the shelf life, zapped all the nutrients out of it, and then refortified it with vitamin C. Doesn't make a lot of sense. And then you buy it, let's say it's an organic juice at like $10, and then you just kind of got rid of $10 out of your pocket. In reality, you should have squeezed your own organic juice and made it yourself. Because then it's from the real source and it hasn't gone through pasteurization. Which is crazy that we still pasteurize things after Louis Pasteur, or his name, was a crook. On his deathbed, he said that the terrain is everything and that germs don't cause any harm but we still pasteurize everything due to his crooked self telling people they should pasteurize things. And pasteurization is another scam. It's been a scam for the longest period of time. This is why a lot of people have a lot of teeth issues because of pasteurized foods. They drink lots of pasteurized milk upon growing up 
and then they get crowding and their teeth get all messed up. First, people who drink raw milk have none of that. The pasteurization has zapped all the beautiful enzymes, nutrients, minerals, and all of that out of it, and then the teeth start getting all messed up. And they're refortified with a whole bunch of minerals that the body can't absorb, so then the body can't absorb those things, and then over time, their teeth get all messed up. It makes the dentist business a lot of money to have pasteurization. And I know this because I used to drink pasteurized milk. And when I went on to realmilk.com and started researching all of this, started going, wow, all makes sense. How all these industries exist. Just like the whole eye industries. Giving you thicker and thicker glasses. Never addressing the root cause, which was you were just not taking care of your eyes. Just like you were never taking care of your teeth and never taking care of your body. All starts to go and get connected. But pasteurization is just a big scam. It's crazy. It's been and it's still going on. You can walk right now into the grocery store and it says pasteurized milk, pasteurized almond milk, pasteurized juice, pasteurized nuts, pasteurized eggs. It's all still there. And supplements and vitamins. A lot of them have been pasteurized. Extend that shelf life. Or put fillers such as maltodextrin, citric acid, soy lecithin, or artificial natural flavors. That's the other thing. If you're buying supplements and vitamins, you need to be aware of what's in them. They should come with one ingredient, and you should know what's in it. It shouldn't have maltodextrin, which is from GMO corn, which results in bloating. It shouldn't have citric acid, which was derived back when Monsanto 1901 created that. Poisonous mold, which leads to mold allergies. A lot of people suffering from mold issues, citric acid. Look if it's in anything that you use. Then you move to soy lecithin. Soy lecithin from GMO soy. Also blocks vitamin D, vitamin A, zinc, copper, and all the B vitamins. And usually in vitamin D supplements, which is funny. So you put something in a vitamin D supplement to block the ability for you to absorb the vitamin D so that you buy more vitamin D supplements. Then you go into things like artificial flavors and natural flavors, which if you want to get into flavoring, I don't even know if you want to know where those things come from, but they're surely friends and family, I will say, or pets, all kinds of weird stuff with flavoring agents and things like that. It gets really strange. It was a crazy video I'll never forget I watched, and I think it was like 2001, where there was a pet food company which came out and said that, you know, when you're looking at pet food, you might have pets in the pet food. And it was a guy admitting that Scruffy might be in the pet food. So you get into some weird stuff. Like, that's the thing. All of this stuff gets crazy when you get into it. And then you're bringing all of these things in, which work on a frequency, to the body. You know, if you're consuming something that has cells of a human or an animal, like a pet or whatever it may be, that's going into the body. And then that's messing with the mind. So it's crazy. What are your thoughts on dementia? So when you get into things about dementia, you can look into things that are messing with the mind. So there's a lot of things that can mess with our mind. Number one is Wi-Fi and frequencies. Okay, anytime you have Wi-Fi or too much your cell phone, all these frequencies, the new, new smart devices, AirPods, you know, all this technology that they're trying to put people on, turn them into a robot, all of those smart devices mess with the mind. And Wi-Fi impacts the frontal cortex, which once this is blocked off, then only this part starts to work, and then your thought can't function anymore. So when it comes to dementia, the first thing you wanna look at is Wi-Fi and frequencies in the home, getting rid of all of that, hardwiring your devices or using devices which have been hardwired. Next, you can move into superfoods like lion's mane. Lion's mane is remarkable at restoring neural pathways and regenerating the brain and also helping to improve cognition and nerve health. Lion's mane has so many studies on this. So bringing in lion's mane is a great one, but first and foremost, getting rid of those two, which is uh, frequencies and Wi-Fi, then you can move to lion's mane. Switching to an all organic diet is really crucial. The food that you're putting in is affecting your brain. Going out into nature also affects your brain. You wanna be connected to nature so that the thought process can work and you can function. And then last but not least, 
I would say filtering your water so that you're not putting fluoride, which allows aluminum to go up into the brain. Water is crazy. They put a lot of toxins through the water supply so that it goes up into the brain. And dementia has been going absolutely crazy with this whole situation. Dementia, Alzheimer's, memory loss. You have lots of fluoride, you have lots of toxins, and you have lots of EMF. And anytime you talk about the EMF on this side, that information gets censored. But there's a great book called The Invisible Rainbow, which goes heavily into depth on this topic. And the book, The Invisible Rainbow, I highly recommend everybody read that book because you start to really understand that the electromagnetic frequencies, all the stuff they're trying to sell you, AirPods, smartwatches, you know, Roombas, Google Nests, you know, all these smart things that you don't need for your home, they're all pinging unwanted frequencies. And what is the largest receptor in your body? Your brain. It's picking up on all those frequencies. So if you ping a microwave frequency, and this was studied by the US Navy with non-ionizing radiation onto the brain, guess what? This is the antenna. This is what's picking up on those frequencies. So it's going to impact the frontal cortex and the side cortex, resulting into Alzheimer's, dementia, and memory loss. That's why a lot of people are like, I'm, I'm so confused, where am I? You know, Or I'm driving somewhere and I don't know where to go because the EMF, the frequencies, impact the ability for you to have a GPS in your brain. That makes you reliant on GPS. It's crazy when you get into all these things because you start to see how certain things are being targeted. That's what's happening. Being targeted so that there is a dependency or some sort of solution in which they can sell you. Right? If your mind doesn't work, well, we've got a solution. We've got this. We've got a neural link. And if you just take this neural link and you just pop it in there, you could have your memory back. And you could remember things like you've never remembered before. And then we can turn it into a subscription package that you'll have your neural link, which will go into here. And then for $99.99, you could have all your memories and you can play them on a remote, which then connects up to your other smart device, which then connects to your toilet. Isn't that how it all goes? <laughs> I think that's how it goes. It sounds about right. It sounds about where it's going, you know? I mean, that's kind of what it is. Instead, I'll just use my brain and I'll just do that. I mean, that just kind of makes sense to me. Like, I'll just use my mind and I'll focus at keeping my body healthy and I won't put all these things in my body too, you know? I mean, that's the other thing too. Think about the Tesla logo. Kind of looks like a, a, a Viper Bite, you know? When we think about the Tesla logo, you think about the Viper Bite. And then in the 1800s, they said they never wanted to get bit by a Viper or an Adder. And if you think about all these going into those people, then you think, hmm, Tesla logo kind of makes sense. It almost looks like a snake bite. And you get bit by a snake so that once you get this, which has an RF chip inside of it, goes into the arm, then you sync up to your Tesla and then you also take your neural link chip, goes into the brain, and you see where we move into transhumanism. All by using a logo. And all funded by Elon Musk, who is also subsidized. Most people don't realize it's all subsidized. So stay away from all this. Anytime they try to give you these, you know, for a $40 gift card at Target, I would say no. That's for sure. I would, I would go with a hard no on that. Even a Starbucks gift card. You know, Monsanto coffee, I would say no. Go away from that. But it's important to understand, you have to understand what the long-term goals are of what they're trying to do to people, you know. And then when you start to understand that, you start to go, hmm, okay, uh, it kind of makes sense. I see what they're trying to do here. They're trying to do all this stuff. I'm trying to give you all these. I mean, they just changed it the other day. I said, that, I think they said they're now supposed to give people like 90 of these before 18. And then I think now there's adult ones, which I didn't even know. You can get an adult one of these. Now there's like 130 of those. I mean, think of that. All those heavy metals and toxins being put into the, into the body, crossing the blood-brain barrier, going right into the system. How is that going to make people healthier? How, it's kind of like if you, you, know, you took some poison and you just jabbed it in and you're like, you're going to be healthy tomorrow doesn't make any sense. And then back in the 1800s, 
They used to say, if you give a lot of people these, you can make a lot of money. They used to make cartoons in the 1800s about this. They used to say about how we should not be putting any of those toxic chemicals into the body. You know, people need to look back at the 1800s, 1850s, 1900s, when they started push pushing all this. And what was interesting was, is if you didn't take these back in the 1900s, they'd put you in jail. So guess where the whole public educational system came from? Public education reinforced this. And who bought that? Rockefellers. Who did the medical system? Flexner Report. Rockefellers. Who endorses these? Start to connect the dots. Where are you putting your underground bunker? You are, that's funny, underground bunker. Actually, if you think about it, if you were underground, you'd be free of electromagnetic frequencies. So it'd actually be pretty nice if you think about it. If you're sitting in a little bunker underneath, you'd be just chilling underneath there. Probably get bored though. How much could you sit underground, you know, after a while? Like how many times can you sit under, sit down there? You'd probably be like, I gotta do something. Start going like a little stir crazy, you know, you'd be like, me, myself, and Irene <laughs> start changing personalities or something, you know? And then you'd have no sunlight, too. Yeah, somebody just said, which would be kind of crazy. I mean, think of the energy that you would start to build. You would kind of go nuts after a while. So, you know, even if you try to go underground, we're meant to be up here in this big, beautiful ball of sun and everything that's supposed to be here, all of nature. You know, I feel that we're always connected with nature. Now, we could go below if we wanted to, just because, you know, just kind of give us a little balance, kind of like a bear. You know, bears are always hibernating and things like that. But I think, well, you know, we're meant to be a little bit of, I think we're meant to be in a little bit of everything. You know, high altitudes, low altitudes, and probably below ground too. You know, you get a little bit of everything in there. And I think it's important for us as, as humans to kind of be all in that. You need a little balance. Everything in balance. Everything in moderation. Nothing in excessiveness, because we have too much of like excessiveness and extremes and this and this and all the other crazy things and whatever else. But somebody said, only if things go crazy. <laughs> That's funny. Speech. Blah, blah, blah. Let's see. I think that said, I think we covered a little bit of everything today. We can always obviously go on and on for hours about all different topics. But today we talked about censorship. Today we talked about these little things that they try to put into people. Today we talked about a whole bunch of different fun topics. I highly recommend you check out our Telegram channel, Cultivate Elevate. Check out our Shilla Shot, which we talked about as well. If you haven't came to YouTube and Rumble, I will also put up that on this on YouTube and Rumble so that people can see this. I don't know, today I couldn't log into Rumble. And, or, I'm sorry, today I couldn't log into YouTube. Yesterday I couldn't log into Instagram. So I guess, you know, a lot of truth is coming out. And that's why they try to block it. So this will go up on YouTube. This will go up on Rumble. If you want to share it on Instagram, I'm more than thankful if you share these messages. You know, I try to put all this information out and I hope that it can help somebody. You know, because when I had my health issues, professionals, like I said, told me it was genetic, told me I was getting older. But in reality, there's so much that we can do. And if you guys have any more questions about any of our products, Shilja, Dragon's Blood, Pearl, Six Mix, Tremella, Cordyceps, Lion's Mane, Reishi, any of those beautiful superfoods, just send me a message. I'll help you out, help you as much as I can, and try to provide some sort of solution for something that you can do. Because taking back your health is very simple, it's very easy, you just have to take an initiative. And you gotta wanna do it, you know, and not trust any of those. <laughs> Wish you guys all a happy moon day, and I'll see you next time.